humans cannot digest this. Right, the Guyaji people found this out. A lot of their hunting parties would go out. Right, and one day they didn't come back for two weeks. They sent someone out. They found that they'd eaten this plum and killed them. Right, there's only one animal in the world that can eat this. Or the cassowary. Cassowary has a very fast digestive system, and they have digestive enzymes that can handle the toxins. Right, so they can't eat this plum, and it comes out whole. The way it goes through their body, it germinates it. Right, so no cassowary, no cassowary plum, no rainforest. Right, the cassowary is the only one that can disperse these seeds. Yeah, so the cassowary is very, very important. So please don't touch them. I'm only touching this one because it's whole. All right, if you get a bit of sap on your fingers and eat with your fingers, the sap can make you very nauseous. Right, if you take a bite out of one, you won't die. If you eat the whole thing, you'll die. But the Guggianji people say they taste horrendous. Right, so normally if people try it, they're not going to use the rest of it. All right, they'll just become nauseous and vomit it up until they get rid of everything in their stomach. Yeah, so very, very toxic these. You'll see them everywhere. So yeah, please don't touch them. There's a lot of them. See how long it holds up sci-fi. But you missed out, those are poisonous. All these blue plums everywhere. They actually are everywhere. I don't know if it drops out, Angel. If it does, I'll just end it. I'll just look up a vlog instead. So far, so good, I think.
party team. You're in your first environment, all right? Anyone know what this uh, tree is called, apart from Catherine? <laughs> Anyone know what it's called? Brendan, you know what these trees are called? Uh, big trees. Big trees? Tick? <laughs> so it's a palm, something palm. Umbrella. Some people call it umbrella, but not the word I'm looking for. Very similar to umbrella. Fan palm. This is called fan palm. Okay, very, very important tree to Aboriginal people. All right. Uh, if you feel a bit, obviously don't rip any off, but parasol. if you feel a bit, it feels very fake, nearly like an Ikea plant. Yeah, the water runs straight off it. So Aboriginal people will cut the leaves back, tie them up, put them over their houses. Yeah, this is their shelter, this is their roofs. All right, now at the bottom of fan palm, this brown fibrous material, very flammable. All right, not many things in this rainforest are flammable. All right, so two things they need out here, shelter and fire. Fan palm provides both of them. All right, so very, very important tree for Aboriginal people. All right, their adaptation, Okay, the, uh, the leaves of a plant is actually what grabs the sunlight and transfers it into the plant for energy. So the further they fan out, the more sunlight they can grab, the taller they can grow into the canopy. All right, so their adaptation is just to fan out as wide as they possibly can. All right, so they absolutely dominate the canopy. Look on the forest floor, it's quite barren. Nothing really grows. That's because fan palm just destroy any sunlight coming through. All right, so they just dominate this first part of the canopy. As you walk through, they get less and less requires way too much energy just to completely take over a whole rainforest. They just dominate this first part, and as you come through, you'll see less. Good adaptation, but it requires a lot of energy to grow. Yeah. That was feel fake. Yeah, that was my second guessing you. Parasol. Cool. That looks sick. Hmm. Alrighty, team. Second question. Anyone know what this tree is called? Yeah, too good. Strangle the fig. All right, this is, this is, in my opinion, this is the smartest adaptation by a mile. All right, strangler fig is an epiphyte. All right, so it doesn't grow from the ground up, it grows from the top down. So what happens? A bird, a bat, or a possum might eat the fig, the fruit. All right, they go and host at the top of a host tree. All right, the fig comes out the other end of that animal. The seed starts germinating from the top of the canopy where all the sunlight is. All right, so the sunlight hits that seed, that seed starts growing down. It gets guided by the host tree. All right, these are its roots. All right, getting guided by that host tree into the <coughs> ground. Yeah, once it gets to the ground, sucks up all the nutrients and water. This host tree doesn't get the nutrients it needs. Over 50 years, 100 years, all right, this host tree will rot, go hollow, get washed out by wind or water. So you come back on this boardwalk saying 50 years, this will be a skeleton of where this host tree used to be. You can probably stand up inside it. All right, very, very smart adaptation. This tree has somehow figured out that it's better to grow up from up there down than to go from uh, down to up. Very, very smart tree. It right? doesn't want to compete against all these ground dwelling plants. All right, so has to be careful though. All right, if this strangling fig strangles this tree and kills it too quick and the tree falls over, the strangled fig will fall over, everything dies. All right, so it needs to come down, strangle the tree, becomes strong enough to hold it in place so when it dies and it's ready to fall over, it can actually hold it in place. 
All right, so this one's really big. This will definitely survive. As you come through, you'll see a few smaller ones. All right, now, this tree is the inspiration for a very famous movie. Anyone know that movie? No, it's not a bad guess. Some people guess that. Top Gun Maverick. No, but I do love that movie. Avatar. Yes. Avatar. Yeah, so James Cameron, he holidayed in Cairns. All right, he went to see a strangler fig just south of Cairns called the Curtain Fig Tree. All right, it's grown in a curtain-like feature. All right, he saw that tree, and that is how he designed Home Tree. So Home Tree is just a big strangler fig, how all the blue people live up inside it. Yeah, dramatised for the movie. No strangler fig gets that big. All right, but it's just a strangler fig. And he designed all of Pandora off this rainforest. So Pandora is pretty much the Daintree rainforest. Now, I don't know if you know how well you know Avatar, but when Jake first enters Pandora and he's hitting those plants and they're disappearing, yeah, that's mm. off a weed we have here called sensitive weed. You touch it, it disappears. So everything he uh, kind of based on Pandora was all off this rainforest. Yeah, really, really cool. He was on my tour. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> probably <laughs> took his private helicopter here or something. Yeah. <laughs> I probably couldn't even tell if it was him. I wouldn't even know what he looks like. <laughs> Yeah, it's strangler fig. So then here's a very small one. That one will need to get a lot bigger before that host tree dies. Now the next two questions are the two hard ones. Yeah, what is this called? It belongs to a species of tree that is some of the oldest in the world. Okay. Yes. So it's something cycad. It's a tough one, I didn't know it. This is called a hope cycad. Yeah, now the hope cycad grows one centimetre every year. If I stand nearly two metres tall, put another one on top of me, you're about to walk past a tree that's 400 years old. Yeah, that's how slow it grows. And for a tree to be 400 years old is absolutely unbelievable, right, when you really think about it. Yeah, so um, there's that curtain fig, that's south of Cairns. Um, that's deemed one of the oldest trees uh, around this area, around Cairns, and that's 700 years old. All right, so this is 400, not that far away from it. Yeah, so to walk past a tree that old is, is actually pretty amazing. Just as you come through, that little bird over there, that's an orange footed scrub foal. You can kind of see it walking away in there. They actually make their nest two metres high. Yeah, the so animals that eat eggs can't get up that can't high. Can't see it. Yeah, so if you ever see a, a nest that's really, really high, it's not like oh, termite mound or anything, it's how high scrub foals make their nest. Yeah, just so uh, egg eaters can't get that high into the nest. It's gone away now. Yeah, but you can kind of see it just through there. They say they have the funniest running style out of any animal. When they get going, their head really starts. Yeah. But you can kind of see it just through there. Scratching in the uh, soil. Now, the correct term for this plant is called lawyer palm. Anyone know what the uh, Australian word for it is? A real play on words. Nah? So this is called, this is the hardest question, this is called wait a while. Yeah, because if you get caught up in it, you're going to be waiting a while. Yeah, that's why they call it that. Alright, so this one grows spines. Alright, so I used to put it on my skin, but that was stupid because it hurts. Like that. Oh. So what happens, this wait a while gets blown by the wind. It relies on the wind. Okay, it gets blown onto a host tree, right? The spines grab onto it, coils its way up into the canopy for sunlight. It doesn't want to use its own energy, it wants to use a host tree's energy. Yeah, really, really smart. Now these spines, they kind of pointed down. 
All right, so Aboriginal people will cut it back at the root, coil it up, put it at the front of their fish trap. Yeah, the fish can swim with the spines, they can't swim against the spines. That's how they catch all their fish. Yeah, really, really smart. All right, now this is invasive to Australia, all right, but it grows really well here because it's got a good adaptation. All right, you'll see a lot of other trees do it. All right, they all kind of wrap up host trees to get to the canopy. All right, now these you've got to be careful with. Tomorrow you do this walk, that wind could have blown it across the boardwalk. All right, you've got to be careful because right, the spines are really strong. They can cut your throat, cut your hands, right, cut your stomach, anything. And they get really thick, as you can see here. People ride motorbikes through here. If that gets over the canopy, you're going too quick, you can slice your throat open. Yeah, so wait a while, it is very, very dangerous. Cassowaries, that's what they nest in. Right, their feathers are so thick that the, the thorns don't affect them. So they'll walk in to wait a while to make sure no one's going to come behind them because nothing else can get through the wait a while. Yeah, they're very, very smart birds. If you ever get stuck in wait a while, walk backwards. Don't walk forwards. Yeah, that's how you get more stuff. I love how Australians name things. Yeah, I know. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many names for everything. Like Hill's Hoist? You know Hill's Hoist is? Is it a hoist on the hill? No, it's a close one. <laughs> but you hang your toy there. Uh. There's so many names that even like people from Australia and the city wouldn't know. They're all like country terms. Yeah. Like Australian slang. Yeah. But like then Australians start making up ridiculous names for some things. You're oh, like, where's that stuff, come from? Yeah, some stuff's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> we just get scientists on board. You would know all about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some of their naming stuff. Yeah. Some of it goes out of control, doesn't it? Alright team, can you want to tell me what these trees are? Yeah, mangroves. Yeah, mangroves are single-handedly the most important tree in here. Yeah, those mangroves aren't there, that water could be a metre deep. Yeah, it keeps the soil and sediment in place. Alright, they say 85% of all aquatic species rely on mangroves at some stage in their life cycle. You get rid of these mangroves, aquatic biodiversity goes straight down. That is why mangroves are completely protected. Alright, there's one reason why mangroves can survive in a salty environment. Because their roots come back out of the ground, they're called nematophores. They call them snorkel roots, now they breathe. They have salty soil, very poor nutrient soil. All right, they need to come back out of the soil to breathe. That's how they tolerate salt water. Not many plants can tolerate salt water. That's why the Daintree River is getting wider and wider due to erosion. All right, as these mangroves got taken out, the, uh, the river, the salty environment would start to hit plants that can't handle salt water. They would die and that, that river is just getting wider and wider. All right, pretty much due to erosion, these, these plants not being able to tolerate salt water. All right, so this is one mangrove. There's another mangrove environment that we're going to go through, and there's a different species of mangrove. You'll see how different they look. All right now, there's little holes in the ground everywhere. You guys probably haven't seen them because as soon as they see me, they scurry away. Anyone know what would be making all these holes? Crabs. Crabs. 
Yeah, mud crabs. All right, Aboriginal people, all right, they catch these mud crabs, they can get really big, all right, and the way they create a sustainable environment, what they do, they catch all these mud crabs, they snap all the right claws off them. That's their dinner, then they release them. When they recatch that crab, that right claw is starting to grow back, they snap all the left claws off. If they snap both claws off and get greedy and have a big feed, that crab is dead. Can't defend itself, can't eat, the crab population goes straight down. So they just keep snapping claws off as they recatch them. So if you ever see a crab with a big claw and a small claw, that's why. All right, so once they recatch it and they understand that that right claw is ready um, to take over, they'll snap all the left claws off. Yeah, they only take what they need. They keep everything sustainable in here. Very, very smart people. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah? <laughs> so just grab it by the legs, if you can. By the head. Yeah, and just put it on your tongue. Oh, it's like lemon. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, so just so you know, team, there's a little green ant nest up here. What was your name, sorry? Peter. Peter. So I just got Peter to try one. What does it taste like? Lime, lemon. Lemon. Yeah. Just like lemony sherbet, bang, explodes in your mouth. You just grab my leg, put it on your tongue. Aboriginal people, they just grab a few of them and just chuck them straight in their mouth. Yeah. Sometimes make your face go a little bit limp, but it's all right, you'll be fine. <laughs> so if anyone wants to try one, they just up here. You just get to put your hand by the nest, grab it by the leg, try, if you, try not to hurt it if you can, put it on your tongue. It's a great flavour. Yeah, it's awesome. So it's just up here. <laughs> uh, most Aboriginal people just eat them. Yeah, spray in the mouth, pull It doesn't taste good. Yeah, it's, you can feel the, you feel the uh, leg running on your tongue. It's a little bit weird, but yeah, most people just dab it on their tongue. Yeah, you can really taste the flavour. That's where all the flavour is. Yeah. That's like a bitter aftertaste. Yeah. Yeah. But like straight away. It yeah, straight away. It was like, like oh, you like, this is a lot. It's sour like a warhead nearly. Like a, yeah. yeah. It's really sour. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Four on two not well. <clears throat> Alright team, now just so you know, this is that one famous beach. Mile Beach, where the rainforest meets the reef. Alright, so you take a photo on this beach. That's what you're going to tell people is where two UNESCO World Heritage Sites meet. As you walk out, look to your right, you'll see Snapper Island. Yeah, if you haven't seen the shade of it yet, look to your left. If the tide's not up too much, you can see the coral meet the reef, uh, meet the rainforest. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to walk out here. We're going to walk 100 metres down the beach, have a nice stroll, take some photos. All right, we're going to exit at another point. All right, but immerse yourselves, yeah? Take some photos while you're here, have a nice walk. Don't go too close to the water. There's crocodiles in the water here. So don't go too <laughs> close, but go out, team, take a few photos. You know, walk on the beach, take your shoes off if you like. All right, then. <laughs> See, he wasn't kidding. Crocodiles. Yes, I just ate a bug. Well, it was an ant. <laughs> Tasted like a warhead. I want to be there. Yeah, this is beautiful. Did you guys hear what he said? Do you know why this beach is so special? Oh, it's stumped, don't make those noises. Lol. I wonder what lives in there, probably crab. Why? It's where the Dane Tree Forest meets the Great Barrier Reef. So the only spot on the planet where two UNESCO World Heritage Sites meet. <laughs> so this is the only spot in the world that you can you can stand on two World Heritage Sites. Kind of amazing. <laughs> I mean, you can't see, but apparently the coral is really close to the water. He showed us an aerial shot before and it did look close. Yeah, Dane Tree Rainforest. Croc, yeah, yeah, and there's crocs. So um, he said, don't get close to the water. <laughs> there's crocodiles. They actually had um, he just said so a dog, so a man's dog, just got um, taken by a croc uh, two weeks ago. And in 2016 was the last time somebody uh got hit by a croc, like an actual fatality. So yeah. And the guy was lucky because he was swimming with his dog. So, uh, like, it was it was 50-50 chance. Like, it could have been him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's uh, it's actually a very real danger. Sharks, it's like one in a million chance. So it's kind of like, oh, yeah, that's, that's low enough to swim in the beach. Like, you know, we hadn't had a fatality from a shark in, like, 30 years. But crocodiles, it's uh, very real danger. This looks like coconut. 
Yeah. Looks like coconut. Who wants to go shell hunting? Eat it? I'm not eating. Oh, it's dry coconut username. Also, how are you, username? I missed your username. It's been a week with no streamies. Ship me a shell. What do you reckon lives in there, guys? Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> oh, this guy's brave. He's going close to the water. I mean, look, it's probably pretty safe, but you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, somebody clipped this. Only spot in the world where there's two heritage listed sites. Pretty amazing. Edge of the Dane Tree Rainforest. Great Barrier Reef. Do you reckon we'll see a crocodile? How close can I get in the water before a crocodile gets me? Hey, I'm gonna old tab. What's the reception like? Pretty good. You know what? This is close enough. <laughs> there you guys see any crocodiles anywhere? There's a bird over there. Yeah, I wouldn't go shell hunting in there, Angel. I wouldn't risk it for some shells. Oh! That island there, I don't know if you can barely make it out. Maybe in uh, a... That's, uh, that's Snapper Island. Right, I'm gonna go to the shade. What did you call this? Mile Long Beach or some crap like that? Should get closer. Yes, yes, yes. Should I? Hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, I thought it was an umbrella tree. It was actually a fan tree. I was gonna say parasol, but that's yeah. Ugh. I'm still tasting ant. Saltwater crocodiles. Wait, are alligators saltwater? I don't know, this feels like, um, do you remember when Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear went to the North Pole? And it was trying to, and like, literally trying to find like zero, 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 zero on the GPS, because that's the North Pole. He was like, oh, well this is it. It's just a spot on the ground. <laughs> He thought there will be like a, like a beam of light or something shooting from the sky to signal the North Pole. He's laughing. I was like, where's the beam of light coming from the sky to signify the, you know, the rainforest meeting the reef? I was like, oh, okay, this is it. It's just sand. That's all she wrote. Let's have a look in the rock pool. Guys, do I get any closer? Any rocks in there? That looks like a crocodile. I'm getting way back now. That looks like a crocodile. All right, we've seen enough. How do we get home? But yeah, it's quite mountainous. 
this uh, area as well. So yeah. I'm sure you guys heard what he said about Avatar. That was pretty cool. James Cameron was here. <laughs> That's how they dig. Look at these. That's how they um they make their holes. Oh, this must go really far. See these uh ball looking things? That's how they dig. So there's a crab in there, a tiny one. I think. They're all over. See all that? That's all balls. So that's how they dig it. They roll them up into balls and uh and uh push them out. all over. It's everywhere. Oh, there's a nice log there. This is awesome. Oh, thanks, Slife. I, I'm glad there's a uh, reception. There wasn't much reception before. But yeah, very special rainforest, the Daintree rainforest. I'm gonna sit by this log. But yeah. So tomorrow we're going to the reef and I don't know how I'm gonna take you guys there. I can't stream on the water. Oh my god, if I could, I would. Can you imagine like seeing like the Great Barrier Reef on stream? That'll be so sick. Yeah, we did it, guys. The only spot in the world where there's two UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Pretty cool, I guess. I can tick that off the bucket list. God, was that a snake? What was that sound? Is it? Mm, now I'm too, too close to the rainforest. More mangroves. But yeah, I wish to see a snake. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. <laughs> oh, so um, just north of Cairns, there's this place called Peb Pebble Beach. And apparently it's all pebbles, so no sand, just all pebbles. And houses are really cheap there. And uh, the guard was saying, uh, his mate said, oh, we'll just buy a house. He was like, nah, nah, I want to buy a house in Cairns. So he bought a house in Cairns. He bought a house in Pebble Beach. And then two days later, he found out why the house, uh, two days after he bought the house, he found out why the, uh, why, why it's so cheap. You guys get? Let's just say Angel, that's uncomfy? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. snakes there. Wow, okay, that's exactly it. <laughs> that's exactly it. So the snakes like to go in the pebbles, and once the sun goes down, they like to go in the houses. <laughs> and his mate had 35 snakes around the house. They weren't venomous, which is good, but I mean, probably still wouldn't want it anyway, so. He's, uh, they lasted three weeks, and then uh, that was it. <laughs> Imagine that, buying a house, three weeks later selling it, just, that was it, last straw. <laughs> that, that's pretty funny. Very cool though. Rainforest, beach. Rainforest, coral reef. Oh yeah, I bet you they're talking about what I just said. About the crab rolling, rolling the balls. You can see where the tide, uh, where the tide comes in. 
right there. That would be, that's where the tide line would be. This is giving me Dinosaur Island vibes. Yeah. This is probably where they filmed it. the Great Barrier Reef and this is where it meets the Daintree Rainforest. I've never heard of someone dying from a coconut. I've heard a lot about a shark attack, but yeah, it's actually a true fact. So the most dangerous thing in this rainforest. <laughs> this line's really shiny. Yeah, these are all your coconuts. <laughs> that kind of metal thing in the ground there, that's what they use to crack them open. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They're really, really hard to open. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They take a lot of energy. Oh yeah. <laughs> As you can see, that metal thing in the ground, that's what they're using to crack open coconuts. Well, it's coconut shells everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Angel. Good bar is. <laughs> People hear them from not from Australia. They go, they go nuts, is they? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You can really tell which one of the Australians are because you show them like wallabies are like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> place I've ever seen a cassowary off the bus was in here. All right, if you have a hard look, you'll see crabs are everywhere. The juvenile ones have little red nippers, so they're only red, uh, little juvenile crabs. When they get a bit older, they turn brown, really hard to see. It's crab. Uh, but it was kind of just walking through here. Yeah, it was really, really cool. We just stay here for ages just watching it. Yeah, it's the only time I've seen one off the bus. Now, these are a different species of mangrove. These are called elbow roots. They come out of the ground and elbow back into the ground. Yeah, it's a different species, but 
as you come so through, have a look. There's you crabs can see there. crabs everywhere. Yeah, there's yeah. some there. They camouflage pretty well, man. There's actually millions of them in the world. They scurry back in. They scurry, see? So yeah. I probably shouldn't be going first because as soon as they see me, yeah. they, take they scurry off. pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? So I can see them all. <laughs> I'm being sloppy. <clears throat> Any chance we'll see a snake up? We saw one the other day. Oh yeah. Team. See this plant up here? Yeah, it's all got bite marks out of it. What would be making those bite marks? Close, close, not close. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Some sort of grub there. So they're very, very famous for camouflaging because they look exactly like what they kind of nest on. No. It's an insect? Stick insect. Stick insect. The ones here are called peppermint stick insects. When they get scared, they spray this white mist at you. It smells exactly like peppermint. I've got a really small one in my hands. They get really big. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So this is the male. Females, they are the dominant sex of the species. They're massive. They can be even bigger than my hand. I was trying to find a female who went through, but they're really hard to find. This is a male. Yeah, so they'll come through. They won't bore you. They're not poisonous or anything. Did you guys see that? Let's see if I can find one. I don't want to grab one. <laughs> so it looks like, find a tree that looks like that. Right. Really hard to find apparently. Yeah, I can't see shit. comes in to eat them, yeah, they'll spray this white peppermint mist at them. All it is to try and get in their eyes to irritate them, right? Pretty much like a police officer with pepper spray. Mm. Yeah, so when uh, a bird comes in to eat them, all right, they sit on the end of these leaves, all right, and they generally use it as a slippery dip. In the bottom of the plants, they can't mm. get to them. So they just sit in here. Now on this tree, you'll see a lot of small ones. I'll see if I can find a female for you guys. Now, they love the feel of your skin it's soft mm. all right so sometimes they don't like getting off even when you're trying to get him off <laughs> now their feet are like suckers all right mm. i can really feel him sucking to my skin all right so much, much like a frog mm. all right so they can hang upside down so he loves the feel of your skin <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like getting off sometimes a lot of people in australia actually have stick insects as pets mm. so he'll lay in there he'll flatten his body out to look exactly like the leaf so they're really really hard to find yeah so that's a male the female probably double in size Mark, but some of the smaller juvenile ones in here. Hmm. Yeah, they're really yeah, baby yeah. ones. Yeah, there's one in here as well. Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah, so the females are a lot lighter in colour. Alright, so as we come through, I'll try and find one for you. Wow. Now, I'm not saying that we will see one, but two days ago along this path up here, there was a huge red bellied black snake. Yeah, and it wouldn't move off the path, so people nearly had to step over it. <laughs> yeah, just so you know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm guessing it's not in the same spot, but just in case. They're venomous, aren't they? Red belly. Yeah. <laughs> but it wouldn't move. I thought, what is going on? It's like here, it's 
trying to find those sticking sets somewhere. That's one of the pretty sights if you get bitten, I can drive the bus. <laughs> if I see one, I'm running that way. Tour guide rules go out the window if we see a snake. <laughs> Here's another good example of your strangler fig. This one's pretty cool to look at because it's in open canopy. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. You can see just completely taken over that tree. Ooh, yeah. You can kind of see the tree's already dying. It's lost. See all those branches yeah. that it's lost? Yeah. yeah, so it's already not getting the nutrition it needs. <laughs> I'm getting worried now. <laughs> that was like a little stink, but it scared me. As long as you're in front, it's fine, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I actually nearly stepped on it the other day. I was just lucky oh, to drive well. behind me. I grabbed me by the shirt. Oh, no so way. I was in the rainforest. Oh. I was like, what is that? I nearly stepped yeah. on it. Yeah. Sunbeating, was it? Anyone else making all this damage? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Pigs. Yeah. Oh. yeah, pigs are a huge problem in here. But just say as you come through, you'll see a bit of like damage, a bit of bulldozing through here. It's wild pigs. Can you eat them? You can. A bit gamey though. Yeah. yeah. Rangers go up once a year with a thermal scope and shoot them out of the sky and just leave them in the rainforest to rot for other animals and things like that. Yeah, yeah so they just come through and bulldoze the whole rainforest. Mm. Yeah, they've got no apex predator. Nothing's big enough to take it down except for a cassowary. But a cassowary eats crabs and plums. It's not going to take down a pig. Mm. Sometimes I get speared by Aboriginal people, but they reproduce really quick. Not enough for Aboriginal people to spear them all. So they just go gangbuster here. On that drive home, you'll probably see a few of them. Me too, man. I'm trying to find one. Right there. Oh, right there, was it? Pebbles to <laughs> yeah. It was right here somewhere. I have to pretend to be tough. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm not stepping over that. And I was going to have to go and tap it on the tail. Tap it away. And inside I was like... <laughs> but then like, as you're Australian of me, I was like, you probably be like, oh, I'll go just tap it on the tail, guys. <laughs> I did not feel like that on the outside. How big was it? Yeah. It was pretty big, like the blink of the, blink of the path. It's on the brave face. Yeah, I'm on the brave face. Yeah. Because everyone's like, Australians are scared of nothing. <laughs> but inside I was like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> It's really good. As you come in, team, call us over here if you need them. Just in case no one's ever seen a cassowary before, that's what they look like. That's all the shows you for on the way home. Now I'll turn the bus on, get the aircon going. Well, that's our next stop is the ice cream store. But head to the tour if you need to, team. <sighs> Alright guys, I'm gonna end it there. I'm glad you got to see a bit of the the Dane Tree rainforest. For those of you that missed the beginning, where's that plum? If you ever come here, don't eat these plums.
They were everywhere. Where were they? Oh, here's one. There it is. Apparently, they don't even touch it, apparently. Um, but yeah, thanks, guys. I, I wish I could stream more, but um, driving um, to get to this place, there was zero reception. We're near um, Cape Tribulation, which is the last town. So I'm guessing there's a mobile tower somewhere in this town. By getting to this town, there was zero reception. It was horrible. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support again. I'll see you guys soon. Um, I'll probably stream the boat ride to the reef because I'm going to see the reef tomorrow. My last day. My last day in Cairns. I'm going to check out the reef. Um, yeah, I'll try to stream the boat ride there. Might be pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Thanks very much, guys. I'll catch you all soon. All right. Peace out.